dehydrating food. It's also, by the way, no longer whole food because we've removed the water. All cooked food is refined food. Separate issue for people interested in eating whole food. Can't do it if you're eating cooked. So the man's on the island. I didn't forget about him. He didn't die in that short amount of time. And he's dying for lack of water. And you give him water, and he springs back to life. Fine. When you gave him water, did he become less toxic? Probably. By adding water, he became less toxic? Yeah. How does that work? If I have some toxins in a jar and I add water, is there less toxins in the jar than there were? Are there fewer toxins than there were? No, just diluted. It's diluted, but did he become less toxic? No. No, he didn't, did he? But we've been taught that you drink water to remove toxins. And yet it doesn't work, does it? You just you drink water, all it does is add water. It doesn't remove anything, but it does dilute the toxins. In fact, any animal that has been poisoned will seek water. That's a, that's a known fact. If you po any animal that eats anything that is poisonous to it will seek water. Anybody here ever seek water after a Chinese meal? <laughs> Have you been poisoned? Mm -hmm. Of course. I would like you to think in your head just as an experiment for a week or two. Instead of thinking, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty, think, I've been poisoned, I've been poisoned. What have you been poisoned by? MSG. You've been MSG. MSG. <laughs> That's a little specific. There's, only, there's, there's essentially two kinds of poisons that we need to worry about. There's the poisons that come from outside of us. They all make us thirsty. That's the stuff we eat and the stuff we breathe. Primarily the stuff we eat. If we eat anything that we... I mean, what a concept. What kind of people can actually create food that is not health food? You know, I mean, when there only was a... When there only was acoustic guitar, it wasn't called acoustic guitar, it was just called guitar. <laughs> okay? And then eventually there became electric guitar, and so we had to differentiate between electric and acoustic. And it used to be there was only food. Why did we have to name health food as food? We had other kinds of food. We had other kinds of food. We had junk food, essentially. So the man is almost dead now on that island for lack of water, thank you. And, and we add water and it doesn't make him less toxic. All it did is dilute his toxins to an acceptable level because there are also toxins that are created within us. The metabolic byproducts, the waste produced by every cell are toxic to us. It's got to be removed and at some point it's flowing through our system. It's in the cell, then it's in the extracellular tissue, extracellular fluids, and then it's in, picked up by the lymphatic system, and then it's dumped off at the, at the subclavial artery, and it's dumped into the bloodstream, and then it's got to find its way to the liver, where it's going to be, where it's going to be chemically detoxed, and then it's going to find its way to the kidneys, where it's going to be mechanically filtered out. There's toxins all the time in our system. And if they're not kept at a level that is dilute enough, for us to handle, we don't handle it. We don't function. We end up becoming what we call heat stressed due to lack of water. We end up going hyponatremic due to loss of uh, extracellular sodium simply because we were losing so much water to try to stay cool in our fitness activities. We didn't have enough water to keep our own mineral balance going. which very nicely leads us to minerals. But before it does, we covered sugar. And the interesting thing about sugar is that it's not only the fuel of choice, but it's the fuel that is readily available in fruit. Fruit looks good when it comes to sugar. But fruit also looks good when it comes... Yes, can you... Sorry, I didn't mean to. That's right. Um, fruit also looks good when it comes to water. You know, yeah, think about fruit. fruit. Most fruits average about 98% of their weight is water. I dehydrated a watermelon one time. 
<laughs> just to see. Ended up with a sheet of paper. <laughs> Not the rind, but just the fruit itself. Shoo, sheet of paper. It was amazing. Weighed like a sheet of paper. We start talking about critical nutrients for athletes. Water, sugar, fruit looks pretty good. I teach a style of nutrition I call Goldilocks Nutrition. It's really simple. We're not looking for too much of anything. And we're not looking for too little of anything. We're looking for foods whose nutrient components, whose nutrient package, most closely mimics our nutrient needs. The foods whose nutrient package most closely mimics our nutrient needs are invariably going to be the optimum foods for human health and human performance. And there aren't exceptions to that. In every single category of nutrition, from vitamins and minerals and enzymes and coenzymes and antioxidants and phytonutrients and fiber and water and protein and fat and carbohydrates, on through any area that you wish to look at in nutrition, in every area of nutrition, fruit comes closer to mimicking human nutritional needs than any other food source, any other food group. That's pretty astonishing. Not too much, not too little. We've got to give up on this idea of the best source equating to the highest source. When you say, what's the best source of potassium? Oh, bananas. What's the best source of vitamin C? Oranges. What's the best source of omega-3 fatty acids? Oh, cod liver oil or flax oil. You go, no, no, no. Those are the highest sources. Those aren't the best sources. The best sources would be Goldilocks nutrition. I can get you that shoe. You like that shoe? I can get you those shoes, those exact shoes. I have an in with, the, I have an in with those people. And I can get you that exact shoe for four dollars a pair. Great. Thank How you. many pairs do you want? Start with four. Okay. The only thing is they're size twenty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> More is not better. <laughs> lay on the sun in Quito. Lay on the mountaintop in Quito, Ecuador, June twenty-first, on the equator, fourteen thousand feet. Lay out naked at seven a.m. By noon, you'll be in the hospital. Crisp. More is not better. Start jumping up and down on this chair. Maybe two chairs high. Big jump. Up onto there. Get some of the athletes. I can jump that. Yeah, okay. Jump up and down all day. No, more is not better. It's called. There's a difference between overload. Oop, doesn't doesn't work as well when it's off, huh? Yeah, something's wrong. My daddy was an electrician. He says, plug it in. <laughs> That's what I know about electrics. <laughs> Electronics. Okay. More is not better when it comes to sports nutrition. We're looking for foods whose nutrient content most closely mimics our nutritional needs. But in the concept of body salts, and there's about a dozen different relevant body salts, the most crucial ones to us being potassium and sodium. In the issues of the minerals. Fruits don't actually match up with our nutritional needs as athletes. We exceed the minerals provided in fruits alone. We have to go to our second best source, which is vegetables. Now, and, and on the concept of more is not necessarily better, I mean, I've heard about people who drink too much water and they don't have enough minerals and they get lightheaded or they also bomb or do some... You know, yes, there, is a, there must be a balance between minerals and water, but, but the body's very good at regulating the amount of water in the system. You have to control the amount of minerals in the system by consumption. Now this typically, if I can save it 